I don't know, craziest experiences of my life. I think that was the point. Like, I don't know. I don't think I could ever go back from like who I was before that to like doing this entire thing. Yo, what's up? It's Zach Hilton. And while you're sleeping, I'm making history. How did you first get into music? Um, well, when I was, you want like the very, very beginning? Yeah, like the okay. Um, when I was like seven or eight, my mom took me for like vocal lessons. Um, and when I was eight, I joined like a boys chorus <laughs> type thing. And that was like kind of the very first beginning. I didn't like, once I got out of it, I only lasted like a year or two. And once I got out of it, I was kind of like bored of it. And I didn't really feel like doing music. Um, but I guess that's just cause it wasn't the type of music that I particularly liked doing. Um, so when I was like, uh, 15, I made this like stupid ass SoundCloud account. Um, and I was like in love with Lauren Gray. So it had like some like Lauren Gray name in it. Um, and I was just like screaming to the mic and rap about all my friends. Um, and then I started getting in like 2020, like mid 2020, I like found essentially like this new emerging genre, like hyper pop, the shit that I make. Um, but like in its very raw form, like before any of like industries or anything had taken over, it was just like exclusively on SoundCloud. And I realized like that was the type of music that I really resonated with. Cause there was a lot of elements to it that I just like found within myself. Um, so I started making it music under a different name and it was like mostly hyper pop i was just like starting messing around um, i met this kid in austria uh named michael who helped me learn how to mix and master and i was a huge fan of, the, of an artist who doesn't make music anymore but his name was trip 5k um then another artist named oliver francis who all who he makes music still but those were like my two giant inspirations for music in general, like in general, like Oliver, like essentially got me into music. He was the first concert I've ever been to my, like, um, my quote, my graduation quote in high school was things aren't that simple, which is his out or one of his old, like album titles and a tag he uses all the time. Um, and that was essentially what got me into music. Mind you, like all of 2018 through like, 2020 i was making music just for fun like nothing crazy i was listening to like crazy more experimental stuff a lot of stuff with like samples and things like that um like for example like polo perks and the way he sampled i, I love that album punk goes shrill and the way he sampled all those types of songs and i felt like there was a hole in like i guess hyper pop as a genre where there wasn't enough people doing that they did that but not to the extent that i wanted to with I, I just feel like there wasn't enough of that, like 2012, 2011, like that type of pop influence in this newer scene when I could tell that this whole scene was basically in like influenced by that. So I wanted to take those samples and kind of do something crazy with them. You got to experience all of that pop music when you were really young. Yeah. That was you know, some of their first memories of music. Yeah. Yeah. When I was growing up, I would just, uh, like watch those like pop, like Katy Perry roar, all those like call me maybe Carly Rae Jepsen, all those music videos. And I, I guess I didn't really register at the time that I actually liked that music. I was just listening to it. And like, I thought the videos were cool, but like, I don't know, growing up, I kind of realized that that type of music along with the like trap influences of like my teenage years really kind of was what made me like the type of musician I am today how did you first like figure out how to make music you know what I'm oh saying? yeah did like someone teach you or okay so it, it's complicated because when i first made music i i recorded in only audacity i didn't have fl studio and i wouldn't mix my songs i would just put them out with like upping the bass and like s stupid effects on them like built-in audacity effects um and that was what I did for like two years. And I just like, obviously wasn't seeing anything out of it, but I was just like fucking around. Like I had no real goals in it. Um, but then when I, in 2020, when I was making music under a different name, 
I met I met like my friend in Austria who took um, like mixing and mastering lessons from this other artist Trip 5K, um, who I mentioned previously, and like through that I would have him mix and master a lot of my songs, and you'll see that on old Zach Hilton songs he's still the the like mixer and the master. Um, but after that he gave me a couple presets and I started like messing around with EQs and stuff. And then I just got like really into mixing my own vocals and like selecting the beats that I really, really wanted to hear myself on and felt like more people needed to rap on. That that friend from Austria's name is Michael and I don't, uh, he's still doing good right now, but we haven't talked in a minute, but he's cool. <laughs> so beginning of sophomore year of college, I was just like chilling. I, I, right before my sophomore year started, I played a show under this different name like a backyard show with a couple of my like friends at the time. Um, it went well, but I realized like the people there were not the people that were going to like react positive positively towards the music that I wanted to make. Um, and in realizing that, I guess that also kind of made me want to like really host a show of my own because when when the crowd doesn't turn up i feel like that's a way worse thing than having a crowd because it's just like you're not doing a good job despite all these people being here so i wanted to make like shows that were truly for like the culture the scene and like the experience as a whole after that show i basically stopped making music for a couple months i just focused on school um but then i got really just kind of i don't know bored of just doing schoolwork and things like that and i wanted something more and I saw all these people that like were blowing up. Like I remember when I was like my other um, name, <laughs> my other SoundCloud, I, I was like friends with this kid and in five months he blew up. And I was like, okay, and if, I, if he can do that in five months, like sure, obviously he had crazy connections at the start. I was like, with no connections or anything, I just wanna see what I can do. So I basically, I gave myself like five months. I was like, I'm gonna work like as hard as I possibly can for five months and see if I can get into this scene um, at, at any level. And in doing that, I just created a name. I was listening to a lot of PBG Casper and I heard a song Paris Hilton. And I was like, that is like the embodiment of kind of what I want to make mixed with my own artistry. Um, so I named myself Zach Hilton uh, Zach is just like this, I don't know, 2000s fuckboy ass name, especially with no C. I feel like that's a very, I don't know, just fuckboy -y name. And then Hilton, of course, for Paris Hilton. And I dropped my first song, I think it was November 27th, 2021. It was like, I don't even know, swag, 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 hashtag, hashtag pretty boy swag or some shit. And I, it did like, obviously like, not great but like really well considering i had no following or anything so i made a new instagram i started like building that shit up growing um and i was able to just put out tracks that were consistently good and that people liked and like just grew a fan base from there and i can tell that like the people that follow me like really do listen to me and really do like enjoy what i put out and even my content on instagram and things like that Dude, so like a couple of times now you've leveraged the internet yeah like uh obviously that was a very crucial point with like everything in your music making and yeah. honestly daily life anymore yeah you know what are what are some some like tips that you, you can give people or artists starting out yeah on like how to use the internet how to use the internet yeah um well first thing make your songs over two minutes so the soundcloud algorithm hits them <laughs> but second of all just I mean, it's, it's hard to say this, but put out genuinely like good music that you think people and yourself, um, will enjoy and there's time to come back on. And then also using the internet, you also need to be ta like talking to your fans. Like that's a crucial part, talking to people who support you. Um, and in order to gain those fans initially, you just have to link up with other artists, like talk to other artists who are in the scene that you want to be in and see if you can make something out of that even smaller ones like they don't you don't have to go for someone who has 20k followers they're never gonna reply to you 
find someone on SoundCloud who has like a hundred and is making genuinely good music with like crazy mixing. Cause there's a ton of those people out there that no one sees and hit them up and make something with them. Cause I'm sure they would love to. Yeah. That's that definitely a big thing. And something I always see all the time. Like you really need a strong community. Yeah. A hundred percent. Your community is like the whole world now yeah. because of the power of the internet. Exactly. Yeah. It, people knew me from high school as my old like SoundCloud and I just really did not fuck with that. Um, so when I started Zach Hilton, it just felt like a completely fresh start. And the only people that were like talking to me were just random people from the internet and they were all supporting me. So it was like a completely different experience than like people from high school, like shitting on me behind my back. And obviously that was like valid cause I was making bad music. Um, but like, I don't know, with Zach Hilton, it just felt like fun again. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. That's like a really important couple of things there. Cause one, you're enjoying what you're doing. Yeah. You know, that's, that's really important to make good music. You need to actually enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. But then two, you talked about like how you knew some people were hating. Yeah. You know? Yeah. How did, how did that feel? But like, how did you rise above it? I mean, I, I still like, I don't know. It's, it's hard as like, even an internet persona. Cause when you get a little bit of hate, it's still kind of like, uh, that's kind of annoying. And it's always like this little self doubt in your head. That's like, eh, maybe I'm not doing the best, but like seeing the, the people that did support me and seeing how they were supporting me and seeing everyone like really just rally it, I don't know. It just felt like so much better. And when, when I was like in high school and people were just like, kind of la like lashing out I did I never really like truly let it got to me let it get to me and that's why I think I just kept making music because I was like well yeah like this might be bad but like what if in three years like I make something good and obviously that did happen so, so yeah yeah so it's just like just to keep going yeah keep going. yeah and it's true you know, yeah. with everything obviously you're not going to be you know Drake as soon as yeah you start. yeah exactly and even you we everybody got to see like publicly with like the internet, Drake wasn't Drake at first. Like, yeah. I was an actor and yeah. they talk shit. Exactly. He was acting. So I stopped making music. But now that you created Zach Hilton, what was the first moment where you really felt like, oh shit, like I really, this is starting to work? The first moment was when I dropped Call Me Maybe. That song, like, to everyone I knew and to everyone that was following me on Instagram, like that song was like, people just rallied behind that shit, man. I, I went to Seattle um in january of 2022 and like we shot the video there and there was just like i i couldn't even explain it like this energy in the air where just like things were feeling so good like ever like everyone was fucking happy we were all shooting this video together and you can see that in the video we were all smiling and having fun like i don't know i i guess just the entertainment aspect of it and just like the the like kind of world building in songs is just a really fun thing to do uh, we went to my friend's cabin, shot a couple of shots in the snow. Uh, we were in downtown Seattle, shot shots. We were even in Portland, Oregon. Um, on if you watched the Call Me Maybe video, like on that like kitchen counter, that was that was my friend's house. Like it was all just in house recording on an iPhone, and it was just like it just felt fun. I don't know, but that was the first moment that I knew like this might just be something like i might have something here <laughs> you said you shot it on an iphone yeah how you didn't let like oh we don't have a camera we can't shoot a music video yeah you just had the initiative to like figure it out yeah we shot it on an iphone um and i honestly like despite the quality of cameras and things like that that's still one of my favorite videos because it's just like it looks like it was shot on an iphone but in a good way you know what i mean um, and I had one of my friends who I've known for literally like eight years. I played video games with him like my whole life, ha edited that video. Um, and then, yeah, we dropped it and it was awesome. So you met your editor through the internet? Of yeah, through the internet. Most of like everyone I know is through the internet, um, despite the people in this, this house, but yeah. And that's like another reason too, it's just like, that was before Cole Bennett did that whole music video series with the with the iphone yeah you know and he really did that just to kind of really show everybody like you already had the right idea yeah not everybody was thinking that way yeah so you really just put your mind to anything and you can achieve it 100 percent. yeah like i truly got into the scene when uh maxo xoxo hit me up and he was like 
you're underrated, like we need to work or something like that. And that's definitely like my closest friend in this whole like music scene. Cause he's just like a genuinely like cool dude. Um, but that was in April. And then within like a couple days of April, we dropped Mark Jacobs and there's a while you're sleeping article on that song too. Um, and that's by far like one of my favorite songs I've put out. Like the energy on that is just like, you can tell we were both just having fun on it and we were just making a song that like felt good to listen to. Right. Yeah. Even the, um, the album art. Yeah. Yeah. Even the album. I, I, I fucking love Euphoria. That's one of my favorite shows. And then also I just watched White Lotus, which Sydney Sweeney is in. <laughs> and yeah, she's my, uh, if I ever blow up mainstream, which I will, she's definitely going to be my, um, celebrity wife. So shout out Sydney, <laughs> shout out Sydney Sweeney. I dropped Mark Jacobs that did better than any song I've ever dropped. Like by far first day numbers, first week numbers, first everything numbers. Um, and like with that, this, like the summer was rough. I'll say that because even though I dropped like some songs with that did well, like cocaine girl and things like that, I was in like an absolutely horrible mental state. Uh, like the summer of 2022, which was like really hard to push through because like, I also really wanted to host a show and being in that mental state while trying to host a show was like super deteriorating for me, but I still like within God, I, I think we started planning it in June, but within like the first God, I think the first week of July, we had most of the lineup and things like that secured, um, for the show pop stars in LA. Um, and I, I, I managed to do that cause, cause through Maxo, I made all these new connections and things like that, like barely human and Cyrus and, and Baymac and shit and shit like that. Um, and Baymac was already hosting a lot of shows in LA and I wanted to get my hand in that. He sent me the venue. I got the lineup secured. I paid the, uh, the like venue shit. And then I got a lot of help from Jackson too. Um, but then, yeah, so July came around. I was dropping decent songs, um, but then I made a song. I actually made this open. I made this open um, without like a verse or anything on it, and I actually sold it for a hundred dollars. And it was the trending topic open, um, and I sold that months before I dropped it. I dropped it in August, but I realized like Jackson listened to it again. And he was like, "Bro, this is like one of the hardest songs I've ever heard. Like, you have to buy this back." So I sent the dude who bought the open his a hundred dollars back. Um, I put a verse on it and then I draw, I did a shit ton of promo with that. I worked with Josh for promo. Um, and I dropped it on SoundCloud and it did even better than Mark Jacobs, like far beyond anything I've ever dropped. And that was like, I think August 19th. And that was, that was a crazy start because we were in the midst of planning the show pretty much had everything secured to that pl that point and we got the show date um for September 2nd 2022 so it was it was just like trying to get everyone to rally behind this show and then also trying to get all my fans to rally behind this song that I just dropped and promo the absolute hell out of it um but we got it done and I don't know I would say I'm I'm really proud of that just as like a person to be able to like I was also battling like very bad depression that summer or like this summer and it was like a rough time but i wasn't able to like do what i wanted to do super super well um and with the show we had four artists fly out from different states across the u.s one was literally from alaska my my good friend merrick david um who i've also i also met through playing video games he played at pop stars um, and we had a bunch of other artists, Barely Human, Cyrus, Baymac, and Ma and not Maxo, but Lil Yaw and people like that play at Pop Stars. And actually, before Pop Stars, I was able to link up with Yaw um, at his show, take some pictures, get that promo out, and just kind of do everything I needed to do in order to make sure like this show was going to be good. This show was going to sell out. What are some key factors for you to consider the show a success? Take a sales and like audience reaction like that. That is, and also the, all every single artist that I've talked to has said like that is one of their favorite shows they've ever played like by far. Like it, it was, it was 
And when I, when I, we also booked Rebzy, who dropped All I Want Is You Now, which was a crazy person to book. Um, I got that connect through Cyrus and that was like super, super dope. Like the day of the show at like 6 p.m. when I saw people lining out the door and then I was in the green room and Jackson came in and he told me we sold out and also High C is here. Do you want to meet him? I was like, fuck yeah. So we had High C in the green room, took pictures with him and y'all. Um, I don't know. Just like the amount of reaction that I got from the artists, from the people performing, from the venue owner, from just like everyone around me. It was like a collective, like this has been a great success. And also selling the I feel like Zach Hilton tees um, to like just random people who were there was just crazy. Yeah, yeah, I even seen you sign one. Yeah, yeah, I I signed. I think I've signed like three or four since then. But like I signed, I don't know, two or three sh shirts of the shows at your first official Zach Hilton yeah, show, at signing t-shirts at my first shows. It was wild, and it was genuinely one of the like, I don't know craziest experiences of my life i think that was the point like i don't know i don't think i could ever go back from like who i was before that to like doing this entire thing but that being said i didn't like do this show on my own like it was like an entire team effort with all my friends who were like helping print this mer print this merch like day of i think we printed or i think my one of my best friends uh jack printed 40 t-shirts screen hand printing them and like we all nearly sold out of them i know we're done we're done with them now because we sold the rest but it was like a crazy experience just having all my friends really like see that i am like doing something here and actually believe in me and so, so i usually ask like what are some things that what are some tips you would give underground artists but like you've already given them <laughs> you saying like talk talking about like being consistent with your music drop yeah like getting a team yeah and then yeah like when i started i literally dropped once a week like it was every single week i was putting out a song and every single week i was going crazy on promo and telling people that i just dropped a song so right yeah, yeah. and then uh you talked a lot about making connections like what is what are some of the ways that you can make a good connection with somebody I, I mean, like, I struggle with keeping connections because I've, I'm, like, low-key an anti-social person. But but to make the connections, I you just, like, in music, you have to actually be putting out stuff that, like, people want to listen to and be putting out stuff that, like, bigger people will, will recognize as, like, damn, this is, like, kind of a hit. And, like, this should have way more plays than it does because usually bigger people know that. And if you can... Like, if you are able to get a bigger cosign, it helps, like, with everything. Because as soon as you get, like, one person who's in the scene to really, really fuck with you, everyone else starts fucking with you. It's like a snowball effect. I, I guess, like, one of the main things is you just have to be, like, a nice person to them. And also just be, like, consistently, I don't know, applauding their, their efforts. Because their music is probably good and you're listening to it, so you might as well tell them that. You know what I mean? Um, and like with that exchange and if they like your music too, why not ask to work? So like, I'm not dropping like as consistent as I used to, cause I'm really trying to get better at like what I do and just perfect it and make things like sound, make the soundscapes just even more like, I don't know, ethereal. Um, and like with that comes a lot of time to like think about what I want to do next and build more like videos and show ideas and just like ideas for how to, how to market like even video shoots that are open to the public and things like that. Um, but that, I don't know, all that is coming in 2023 with like plans to, to do shit like that. What are the first three songs someone should listen to if they haven't checked you out yet? First three songs someone should listen to, uh, real emo shit. Call Me Maybe and Mark Jacobs just because like those are fan favorites but they're also like my favorites too and if you're a girl you should really listen to real emo shit because you'll probably fall in love with me after that song what's one artist that should do an interview next with Why You're Sleeping oh god Merrick David <laughs> you gotta fly, fly him out from Alaska first they get, no we're gonna go to Alaska go to Alaska wait. days and night type food <laughs> yeah hey, I've been there it's nice I'm, I went there like two summers ago it was super dope <laughs> shout out Merrick David shout out Merrick David he's 
I don't know, I'm in a fucking Snapchat group chat right now. He's probably talking in it. <laughs> What's next for Zach Hilton? What do you have coming up for 2023? 2023, I got a lot of ideas that I need to write down like properly. I'm going to do a big board that says like everything I'm about to do this year. Um, but I made a new Instagram at Zach Hilton with two N's just because the other one's engagement was fucked. I have a really dope show coming out with Lil Dusty G and Ronan. That's on March 2nd this year. Um, and I'm super fucking excited to turn that whole crowd up. Um, and then I just got a bunch of songs coming out with videos and stuff like that. And just a whole bunch of content, a whole bunch of Instagram posts, like everything that I, I did last year, but better basically. Final thought. I feel like Zach Hilton. <laughs>